Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Good morning. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Pentecost. My name is Brian Adams, and it is my privilege to serve as pastor at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Franklin, Wisconsin. Our Lutheran Radio Choir, under the direction of Marie Zelmer, We'll begin our service by singing hymn number 560 in Christian worship, I Hear the Savior Calling. I hear the Savior calling, the gospel comes to me. My eyes once closed in blindness are opened now to see. Have you ever been afraid? A child is afraid of the dark. A young adult is afraid that his friends may not like him. An employee is afraid of being laid off. As one nears the end of their life, they are afraid of dying. Today, we see how Jesus takes away all fear, even the fear of dying. Therefore, let us cling to Jesus for all our needs. Today, Our guest speaker is the Reverend Peter Lyer, who serves as pastor at Risen Savior Lutheran Church in Milwaukee. Stay tuned as Pastor Lyer speaks on the theme, Wait Quietly for the Salvation of the Lord, based on Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 33. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lutheran Radio Choir will now sing hymn number 771 in Christian Worship Supplement, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. Oh, 
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is found in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, reading verses 8 through 14. Death is not a disappointment to Paul, for it is in death that the gospel shines for him most beautifully. For death is the ultimate triumph of those whose God and Savior conquered death for them. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This was the grace given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed, and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. A gospel lesson is written by St. Mark in chapter 5, beginning with the 21st verse. As we travel in life, we face many unknowns ahead of us. We do not need to fear. Glory be to you, O Lord. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little girl is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, and the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him, and he put them all out. He took the child's father, mother, and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Let us join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pastor Lyre will speak in the theme, Wait Quietly for the Salvation of the Lord, immediately after our choir sings hymn number 360, The Lord's My Shepherd, I'll Not Want. No. and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The word of God that we want to consider this morning comes to us out of the Old Testament. It's Lamentations chapter 3. We begin at verse 22. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him offer his cheek to one who would strike him, and let him be filled with disgrace." For no one is cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. For he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. And this is the word of our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, dear brothers and sisters in him, imagine you are a doctor in training. When you get a chance to look at patients for the first time, the only people you get to see are in perfect health. And for all your years of training, you never get to look at a sick person. Or suppose you'd like to learn to fix cars, but the only cars you look at are brand new off the showroom floor with no problems. Now you can learn something from looking at a healthy patient and new car. But to really learn to be a doctor or a mechanic, to really help people or fix cars, you're going to have to look at cancer and emphysema and leaky transmissions and radiators. In the same way, there are certain things we can learn about God and our relationship with him when everything is going well. But all too often we forget that it is in the difficult times that we really grow in our understanding of God and our relationship with him. When things go bad, it's so easy for us to simply give up and conclude that God has left us alone and there is nothing for us to do but leave him. Our text for today challenges us 
to hold on and learn something from the bad times. When we hold on, we learn, first of all, that God has never really let us go. Our text challenges us to wait for the salvation of the Lord. To understand our text, we need to understand a little background. We're reading here the words of Jeremiah, the prophet. In Jeremiah's day, the once great nation of Israel had been reduced to two tribes. The ten tribes in the north had been carried off into captivity and were lost in the pages of history. The two tribes that remained were known as Judah, and throughout their history as a nation, they had a roller coaster relationship with God. Sometimes they honored God and listened to his word. Other times they turned away. Jeremiah lived during one of those times when the Israelites wandered, and he had the difficult task of calling them back to faithfulness. They didn't listen, and because they didn't listen, they were destroyed. The nation of Babylon attacked them, killed the king, destroyed the capital city of Jerusalem, and took almost everybody else back to Babylon as prisoners. Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentations as he surveyed the ruins of the once beautiful city of Jerusalem. Have you ever felt like Jeremiah? All alone as you survey the ruins? Maybe a relationship has failed. A friend betrayed you. An addiction suddenly popped up in your life after you thought it was dead. And suddenly you're looking at your life as a ruin. You think, maybe you saw this coming. Maybe you didn't. But it doesn't matter now. It's a ruin. And you don't see how life can go on. Throughout the book of Lamentations, Jeremiah understands how we get to a place like that because he understood how Jerusalem got to a place like that. The reason, in one simple word, is sin. Sin is rebellion against God, and the reason God forbids it is because it brings pain and heartache. Maybe it's your sin, maybe it's somebody else who has sinned against you, but the reason there is pain and heartache and loss in this world is sin. Sometimes when everything falls apart in our life, it's important for us to find out who the bad guy is. Sometimes that's not as important as just solving the problem. Circumstances differ. But let's not make the common mistake of our day and say that it's all God's fault. Sin, rebellion, heartache, and pain are not part of God's plan. As Jeremiah surveyed the ruins, he finds reason to praise God. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So we might say that Jeremiah observes that things are not so bad that they couldn't be worse. He is still alive, still able to look around. You know, so often when bad things happen, we jump to the conclusion that the state of things is the worst that it could possibly be. One of my favorite movie gags is in that old movie, Young Frankenstein, when Marty Feldman says, it could be worse, it could be raining. And of course, as soon as he says the words, the lightning flashes and the rain starts to fall. Truth is that even the rain is not the worst possible thing that could happen. The worst possible thing that could happen would be for God to reject us and put us in hell. If he hasn't done that, he hasn't given up on us. He still has things for us to do, things for us to learn. Grappling with the reality of sin in the world and in our own lives means that we have to admit that God's condemnation in hell is what we deserve. If he has held off on that final judgment, we have reason to praise him. The Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him, Jeremiah says. This is a fantastic statement of faith. Sure, we enjoy the stuff that God gives us, the homes we live in, the food we eat. Maybe we even remember to thank God for them. But take them all away, and we still have God. Is that enough? 
Sometimes God uses times of loss so that we can figure out what's really important in our lives. It is easy for us to honor and love God and to live in a way that shows that attitude when we have all the things that we need. But will we continue to act as his people? Will we continue to honor him with our lives when we have nothing or almost nothing? I often hear people say, if I win $86 million in the lottery, I'll gladly give 10% to the church. I'll even give 20%. Just think of what that would do for the church budget if God would just let me win. We forget. God doesn't need 20% of $86 million. He doesn't need $86 million. He doesn't need anything. We give to him because we need to do that. Will we so generously give 10 or 20% if God shrinks our income? If we only have a dollar, will we be so happy to give 20 cents? Remember, Jesus praised that widow who gave the two little coins. She understood what Jeremiah says here. The Lord is my portion. Let him sit alone in silence, Jeremiah says about the man who has suffered loss. He's talking about repentance. When things go wrong, it's so easy for us to blame others. Jeremiah could have blamed everybody else for his problems. After all, he had warned them and told them to change their ways, and they didn't listen. And when the city fell, they only got what they deserved. But throughout the book of Lamentations, when Jeremiah talks about the reason for the disaster, he uses the words we and us and our he realizes repentance is something you have to do for yourself. You can't do it for anybody else, and nobody can do it for you. So often we think that life with God means doing the right things and saying the right words here in church on Sunday mornings. There's nothing wrong with what we do in church, but life takes place during the rest of the week. We see smiling people in church, and we think that life with God is all about smiling and putting a good face on things. We think that God doesn't get into the gritty details of life. Oh, but he does. That's what Jesus is all about. He came into this gritty, dirty world and took our sins upon himself. Although he had no sins of his own to repent of, he lived in humble obedience to God, and he did that perfectly in our place. He came into the gritty, dirty heart of mine and yours, and he loves us so much that he continues to live there, even though some days we seem determined to kick him out. No, this world is not perfect, not even close. It is in rebellion against God and his plans. But wait, he's coming back. And when he returns, all things will be made new again, and all things will be set right. What a day that will be. We will see him as he is, and he will make us into more than we dreamed we could be. That day has not yet come, but for now, we have enough. For now, we wait for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Savior Jesus Christ, your word assures us that you want to take us to heaven to be with you in that perfect and glorious life that has been yours from eternity to this end. You both died for our sins and rose again. We take you at your word, trusting you as our Lord and Savior and longing for the wonderful rest that awaits us in heaven. Life is wearisome and discouraging at times because of our struggles against the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh. Inspire our hearts and minds with the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. And also in your name we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lutheran Radio Committee is pleased to offer you a copy of today's sermon by Pastor Lyer. If you'd like to receive a free copy, or if you'd like to sponsor one of our weekly services, please write to us. You may send your tax-deductible contribution to the Lutheran Radio Committee, P.O. Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. We also have a phone number for you if you'd like to reach us at 414-462-9900, or you may check out our website at lrcsonline.org. You have been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church Service coming from the chapel at Wisconsin Lutheran College. This is Pastor Brian Adams serving as your liturgist. Our Lutheran Radio Choir will now close by singing hymn number 619 in Christian worship, God Bless Our Native Land. Preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. Prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. That's the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.